Val, welcome back to Australia. Uh, your latest book, The Skeleton Road, it's amazing. The amount of history on the Balkan Wars, which is sort of the crux of the plot, was fascinating and really informative. Um, you must have spent a great deal of time researching that 20th century European history. How did you do it? Well, as is always the way, I find the best researchers to talk to people who know about these things. So the, the roots of this book actually lie in two very special women who I've known for a long, long time. One was a philosophy tutor at my old college at Oxford, and we were very close friends and stayed so uh, for many years. And she was actually uh, involved in the underground university movement, which uh, conducted sort of secret clandestine classes behind the Iron Curtain. And eventually she got barred from Czechoslovakia and other places, and she ended up spending time in Dubrovnik at the Inter-University Centre there, and inadvertently got caught up in the siege of Dubrovnik. Mm. And she got very involved in, in helping to rebuild the city afterwards. So I heard a lot of her stories over the years. Um, and then I have another friend, Sue Black, who's an anthropologist, and she was the lead forensic anthropologist on, on the British forensic team that went in post-war post in Kosovo to uh, bring up evidence for the, the War Crimes Tribunal. And again, Sue told me many of her experiences there. So that was the backbone of where I started from. Uh, and I researched around that just by, by reading books and, and again talking to some people who had first-hand experience of, of what it was like and journalists and things. And so I, I find when you talk to people about these things, you get a much clearer picture of what it felt like and what mm. it was like to be there. And for a novelist, that's what, that's, that's your, that's your, absolute bread and butter that's what you've got to have a handle on i mean forensic science has changed so much in the past decade and you use it so well in the skeleton road and i know you've got forensic a book that's coming out next next month and how do you keep up with the latest forensic breakthroughs because I mean, some of the things that came up in the skeleton road were just amazing what what you can find out on a on on a skeleton that had been um lying out you know, yeah. for such a long time. It's amazing how much the, 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 they can now discover from just these, what we just think of as bare bones. Um, and I have a few forensic scientists that I've known for a long time and when I'm thinking about a book and I'm trying to figure out how the story's going to work out and how I'm going to make things come together, um, quite often what I'll do is I'll phone up somebody like Sue Black or, or Neve McDade who's a fire, firearms and explosives person and I'll say, okay, what, what's happened in your discipline since we last spoke? What's the, what's the exciting new stuff? What's, what's the, the, the latest developments? What new techniques have you got for me? And sometimes they'll come up with something that I can use. And sometimes they won't, but there'll be something that I can use in another book. I'll, I'll file it away for later reference. So it's really, for me, it's about staying in touch with those personal contacts. Um, I'm not a scientist. I, I don't... Uh, spend my days combing the, the scientific journals for the latest developments, I, I very much rely on the human dimension because that's what my readers are interested in. They're not interested in a dry scientific account. They want to know what something looks like, what it feels like, what and it smells like. And what's coming up too. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. yeah. um, but you have to be careful with, uh, with the science and technology not to let the book be about that. Mm. You can't afford to fall in love with the technology, the science, the, the, the amazing things that these people can do. Because the heart of the book has to be character. Absolutely. If it's not about character, if the story doesn't have that involvement for the reader, then everything else just falls away. There's no point. Plus, if you devote too much focus to the technology, by the time the book comes out, the technology will have moved on. And by the time somebody picks it up in three years' time, they'll go, oh, this is so old. Yeah, that's true. So it's about making the technology and the science serve the story rather than the other way around. Yeah. Now, talking about character, I mean, Detective Chief Inspector Karen Peary, she's appeared in two of your previous novels, The Dark, Darker Domain and Distant Echo. Are you planning more crime novels with her as the protagonist? It would appear to be that way. Um, I wasn't planning on starting another series. Um, and in a sense, Karen is sort of different from Tony oh, Hill and Carol George because she's, yes. she's not centre stage in the books in the same way. She's the glue that holds the book together. Mm. But she's, but she's not the person about whom the book is. So I, I, I think that I will use her again. Uh, as I say, when I had the idea for this book, 
she was sort of shouting loudest in my head, saying, me, me, it's my story, tell me, and let al- me join in. And also uh, uh, River Wild, too, yes. I hope, because they've got a great rapport. It'd be great to have her as the forensic anthropologist come through in another book as well. Yeah. Couple, yeah. yeah, well, I sort of started, I mean, River first appears, I think, in Grave Tattoo, and I think really yeah. the, bringing River and, and, and Karen together was... was it was, about, it was about laziness, really. You know, I needed a forensic anthropologist, I needed a cold case specialist, I already had two, so I just mashed them up together, you know. But it's um, good to have them again, Yes. theory, yes. Yeah, so I think I think the, the chances are that Karen is going to be back. In fact, I've already got a, an idea for a, a good. case good. involving good. Karen. Now, your children's picture book, My Granny is a Pirate, it was published in, in 2012. It's terrific. When are you going to do another children's book, please? Well, I had I, I do have plans for another one, but I did get slightly sidetracked over the last couple of years with, with, uh, with taking on too many projects, really. But uh, next year, um, pretty much all I have to do is next year's crime novel, so I think there may be a, a, a return to Granny. I'm, I'm talking about uh, Pirate Granny and the Revenge of the Skeletons. Ah, skeletons again? Yes. Uh, <laughs> well, it worked, it worked well for this book and it worked well for the, the previous Granny as a Pirate. Now, your capacity to write so many fabulous books so regularly is just mind-blowing. How do you do it? I mean, next year you say there's only one and maybe another Granny, please. Uh, but how do you do it? Stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I write a book a year uh, and that's fine. That is the, the rate at which my imagination seems to function. But... Um, a couple of years ago, I was approached by the Austin Project and asked if I would like to do Northanger Abbey, which yes. is a modern reimagining of the Jane Austen classic. And uh, I thought about it for about 30 seconds, and I thought, this is too good to miss. Absolutely. And so I did that, and it turned out to be great fun. Uh, I, I, I had the basic plot structure to follow, and I had the, the same characters to use, but it was a modern retelling. I resituated the story in Edinburgh during the festival, um, a place that I know very well, and I moved Northanger Abbey to the borders. So uh, I had a slightly different ambience, shall we say, to the original, but, but the rest of it is, is kind of faithful to the, the idea. But I had great fun with that, and, and, and I think the, the delight that I took in writing it is, is evident in the, in the text. So that was one thing that was, was too good to miss. And the other thing was, uh, as you mentioned earlier, this, this forensics book, mm. um, which comes out next month, Forensics, The Anatomy of Crime. And again, I was, I was approached by the, the Wellcome Trust, who have a big medical museum in London. Uh, they're closed for refurbishment at the moment, but they're reopening with a new exhibition early next year about the history of forensic science. And they wanted a book to accompany it that was not just a catalogue of the exhibition, but actually explored the history and practice of forensics. So essentially I ended up uh, doing this, this book, which is a series of interviews with forensic scientists set in the context of the history of their particular disciplines. And again, it was too good to resist. You Absolutely. Know? I mean, how yes. often do people say, we'll give you money to go around talking to interesting people? Um, yeah. So that, that, again, was another project that, uh, that I couldn't say no to. And again, because of it being tied to the exhibition, was time sensitive. So I just had to buckle down and do it. Any further Val McDermott books going to become a television series or is it well it's kind of watched this space at the moment uh, there's various things in development uh, but as, as always the way with these things you know development covers a multitude of sins um, it's one of those things that sometimes things go quiet for a while and then all of a sudden there's a great flurry of interest in different things so watch this space thank you so much enjoy your time in Australia this time it's a pleasure it always is thank you Val